Hi, you asked for it and here it finally is, a video about how to make your own fitting kimono padding. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and professional kimono teacher and stylist. Kimono padding in Japanese is called hoseigi. Stop! Stop! Sorry, I have to stop here for a moment because I have to apologize and to correct myself. In my video two weeks ago, I was talking about ni hai ma geta that are actually called ni mai ha geta. I think you can see the twist here. By the way, the Japanese characters were ni mai ha, so at least that was right. I thought it was a typo at first, but apparently I said it out loud several times in the video and I really want to apologize for that. But that shows we are all not perfect, right? <laughs> when you ever hear me talking about ni hai ma geta on this channel again, because my brain seems to like that word way too much, just laugh and say oh Billy her brain is just too messed up to get all that things right. So that was for that and I hope you can forgive me and enjoy this awesome video. And I often get a lot of messages about do I really need that and I would say <laughs> it depends. When you want to wear a kimono on point perfectly like it's in fashion these days, then you wouldn't come around to do at least a little padding. When you're fine with super traditional kids gift from maybe the 20s or 30s, you don't have to pad at all. So it, that's totally up to you. When you ask a thousand people about kimono padding, you will get a thousand opinions on it because everybody pads differently and we all need to know our body a little more so we know how much padding is actually needed and how much padding we actually want. However, I would divide padding into two big padding styles. There are no official names for it. That's just a tendency that I see when I talk with people about padding. There is this one kind of padding I would call probably decisive padding because you have to decide where you pad and how much you pad. Usually you don't pad too much with that method. You only fill up the curves and that's all. And when you for example have a bigger chest, you would tie it up and you don't have to pad at all there. So using tying up and padding is some kind of a set and I would call that decisive padding. The other padding method is what I would call positive padding. I would say positive because it's not only filling up curves, it's also creating new curves that would make you look even better in your kimono. Positive padding is usually used at shootings for magazines or commercials or TV dramas or even fashion shows because it shows the kimono so much better and it draws more attention onto the kimono than onto the model. So when I shoot or I style for commercials, I definitely use positive padding because it just looks better on screen. In my case, I use both of those methods. I use a decisive padding for my hip area and I'm going to show you how I do this today. And I use positive padding for my chest area. Because, as you can see, I don't have a chest at all. When you, for example, have bigger boobs and you wear some kind of a corset that squeezes them into the right place, you will have the perfect kimono body shape already. I don't have that, I do have to make that curve. <laughs> you can see I positive pad from my upper chest area to my shoulders. So I have this nice curve and this makes look my color even nicer. If you are interested in this chest padding, I would have to do a whole other video on this because it's uh, a little more difficult to explain. If you want to see that video, let me know down below in the comments and I will plan such a video for you. Today I want to show you how to make padding for your hip area that will help you that you have a nicer ohashuri and also that your 
OB will stay in place. So let's check how padding changes your style. You can probably not tell from the front, but when I turn to the side, you can see me very flat chested on the right and this nice curve on the left. When you compare, you can see that the neck collar looks way more dramatic with padding than it looks without padding. Let's also take a look at the OB line. When you compare both lines, you can see that the left is closer to a horizontal line and that is because the OB falls down and then sits on your butt, although it should sit on your hips height when you don't pad. Hip padding helps to provide this nice form that will keep your OB on the height of your hips. For this you need two towels. And I'm gonna measure them right now because I was too stupid to measure them beforehand and just tell you the length. 78 centimeter length and I'm probably gonna put in the inches as well because I'm so sorry I can't do inches and width is 36 centimeters um, if you don't have a towel in that size you don't have to cut it and um, try first to work with the length and um, the width you have and you will also need a normal cotton strap you get at a sewing supply store. I bought um, 2.5 centimeters for this. Length depends on if you want to tie your Hosegi on the front or if you want to tie it on the back. I usually tie it on the back because I use my own Hosegi for shootings. And when I style a model, I actually stand behind her back when I put on her Hosegi. So I rather tie that on the back then so that's totally up to you because i want to tie it on the back i got a one meter and 20 centimeter okay so let's dive right into it first we have to make sure with what we are working that's me without kimono by the way if we would want to positive pad the hip, we would have to fill in this whole spine curve to create a straight line. Decisive padding would only fill up the lower part of the waist to create this less dramatic diagonal line that will lead into the butt. This is what I am aiming for. Lay the second towel onto the first towel. You can see that it's a little smaller, but it doesn't have to be. Then I fold the lower quarter of the towel up twice. When you put the upper half on top of that, you are done. Try this on by laying this onto your hip and feel with your hands if it fills the curve and leads nicely to your butt. You can also use a mirror for checking this. If this is not enough padding, lay a smaller towel onto the center of the two towels. Make sure that it is not too long because you want to avoid to pad your belly. And then you fold the towels like before. When you are dramatically hourglass shaped, I recommend to fold the inner little towel downwards into half to have a voluminous middle part to extend your butt line, but it won't be bulky around your hips. Try the Hosegi on between all those tries to find the perfect size for you. And when you have that, you can start sewing. I cut off the ends of the inner towel because I found them to be very bulky on the front and as I said before, I don't want to have a bulky belly.
cut also the strap into half and pin it onto the towels. I recommend to hand stitch the Hosegi. You can do this however you want. I use a stitch that is called Chidorikage, but any other stitch just to keep it in place is fine. Then I secure the straps onto the towels and close the open ends and then we are done. So now I'm going to try on the final product. You can see how nicely I achieved this diagonal line leading to my butt. This will hold my OB in place. I really hope this video was a little helpful, but I still recommend try out many different things until you find the padding style that is most fitted to you. If you want to know how to have a neat ohashuri, I have a video for that you might check out on this channel too. If you want to stick around a little more, hit the subscribe button, leave me comments for further requests what you want to see in the future and ask questions if you have some and thank you all for helping me answering those questions because I'm just a person and I don't know everything and it helps when you also share your knowledge and experience with others you can do this down below in the comments or also write me messages on Instagram and let me know what you know so I can tell others and I'll talk to you in my next video next week bye